Join us talking about everything going on in Major League Baseball at Baseball's Break on the night of the Home Run Derby on the Worldwide Leader in Sports is our favorite Jeff Passan back on the program. How are you, Jeff? I'm doing great, Rich. I don't I don't know how the quality of the audio is coming through right now. I hope it's good because I am uh, – there, there's a little get-together with Julio Rodriguez this morning, and uh, I left that and am now down the hall – inside of a room with two ice machines and a very leaky faucet mm. and it, it's it's just beautiful i i love this okay I've never done uh never done a radio hit from an ice machine room before okay so i just hope no one comes in is this are you, so are you in the bowels of the stadium in, in seattle is that what you're saying where you are right now no no this is at a hotel oh. actually i'm gonna i'm gonna I'll send you a picture right now. I would like it. So you can I would like the ridiculousness. It. Well, if you have reception oh, enough, I, I don't want you to use your your any of your G's <laughs> up on this. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> down to a one G situation. Uh, it's a one G situation yeah. in that room. Did yeah. you hold on a minute? In all seriousness, did you say there was a death threat for one of the young stars of the game? Is that what you said? No, did I say that? What did you say? Did I, what did you say? Did you say, did I over, did I mishear that? What's what's going on right now with Julio Rodriguez that you said? Oh, he's having an event. Oh, God. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> so he's that's, having, it's, like I, a, think, I think ice like just dropped. Threat. I think, my God, that was serious. Yeah, no. Okay. So wait he's a minute. Having, so you're, He's having like a, okay, a good. breakfast get together. God bless. Luis Fernandez just showed up. Oh, great. Like Fantastic. The, the luminaries of Seattle. The luminaries of Seattle. Fantastic. Uh, I, I think that's that, that's that's terrific. Good. I'm so glad. Uh, if Jim LeFever shows up, let me know. Um, uh, okay. So let's just jump into this, uh, Jeff. Um, what is the, the major story right now in baseball at this All-Star break? I'll go macro with you to start this conversation. What do you got for me? I mean, it's, it's got to be Shohei Otani, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, every everything about Shohei Otani. Let's let's look at the the three different elements that we have intersecting simultaneously. Number one, he's the best player in the world right now. That there is no doubt about that. And if there's an argument at this point, it's is he the most talented player ever to play? I don't think we can say he's the best player yet because I think when I'm talking best, at least I'm talking both talent, production, and longevity. I think in order to be the best, you need all three. He's got the talent. He's got the production. We'll see about the longevity. Uh, the second element is the Angels stink right now. They're under 500. Their playoff spots, you know, and playoff hopes are dwindling. Mike Trout is going to be out through the trade deadline. Mm. Uh, do the Angels trade Shohei Otani? And if so, where does he go? And is he going to be for the first time in the postseason? Because remember, school has not been in the postseason in his career. And somebody just came in to get some ice. So my apologies. <laughs> I had to step out so the young gentleman there could get some ice. Uh, okay. Third, All right. <laughs> somebody needs ice. I, Hold on a minute. I'm going to make this turn. I'm going to make this turn. I'm going to make this turn. Shohei wants to put ice on his finger, right? So the whole oh boy. point of do you, it, do you, you know, do you trust hotel ice machines, Rich? Never. Are you kidding me? Wait, really? Exactly. Exactly. No. I, I will say though, I don't. This is a fancy hotel, and they had two water filters on the wall, so I might trust this hotel okay. ice machine. But the third element with third element with Shohei Otani <laughs> is where does he go this off season? He's a he's a free agent, and and that's the calculus that the Angels are trying to deal with right now. For six years, they have had him. Six years of not winning. And Shohei Otani was at his very happiest mm -hmm. during this World Baseball Classic in March when he led Samurai Japan to the championship. I've never seen smiles on his face quite like the ones he had when he was playing in the WBC. So it's clear that winning matters to him. And if the Angels can't win, is he going to resign there? If he doesn't resign there and they keep him for the season, then they get like the 70th pick in the draft next year, which mm. isn't worth a whole lot, as opposed to if they trade him at the deadline this year, they would get a ton, maybe not like a Juan Soto level package, Rich, but pretty close to it. So there are all of these storylines with Otani that are intersecting in, intersecting in a very fascinating way. Well, what are you hearing there? Because, I mean, they're five out. And since you and I last spoke, we spoke about three weeks ago, and they were – 
uh, above 500. They they were about six games above, above 500. 500. They were they, yeah, they were a playoff. Team. They were a playoff they team, and then Trout breaks his yeah. his hand. Uh, Otani, you know, gets pulled yeah. from a start with a blister. You know, Rendon uh, gets hurt as well. So the question I have is why? I mean, the the writing's on the wall. I mean, Trout's not coming back over the next few weeks, and you know. Uh, if they don't make a, if let's just say they don't, they don't win five in a row to start the second half, de facto, you know, how, how do they hold? How do they hold on to him? Or how about this one? This is a better one. Is Otani going to like pull Damian Lillard and finally tap his wrist and say, "I want out"? I mean, what does he say? What no, is what no, is he no. saying? He will. He will. He will. He will never do that. Uh, though he's going to be speaking in uh, like. An hour or so okay. at, at T-Mobile Park for All-Star Media Day. And that will be, I'm sure, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth question to him. Some different derivation of are you going to be traded, do you want to be traded, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I don't think Shohei Otani is the sort of person. And baseball is generally not the sort of sport where you request trades and where trade requests are obliged. Remember, Brian Reynolds had a trade request in place with the Pirates, ended up signing an extension with them. Trade requests are used more as contract negotiation leverage in baseball than they are actual, genuine, legitimate, I want to get out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I think it comes down to this. Will Artie Moreno, the Angels owner, actually come to terms with what the, the way he has shepherded and stewarded the franchise has led to? Will he come to terms with the fact that the failures of the last six years make Otani resigning that much more difficult? And will he just call, you know, will he just say uncle and say, I'm going to salvage this the best I can? Or is he going to continue his tack, which honestly, the logical part of me doesn't understand, but the emotional part certainly does in that you have, maybe the best player in the history of the game, do you want to be the person who traded him and who traded him to a place where potentially he's going to see that not only can he be comfortable there too, but yeah, he can win. The two things are not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. And in that case, of course he's going to want out. It's almost like you don't want to show him that the grass is actually greener on the other side, because as long as he's under this, you know, perspective or, or seeing through this perspective where, you know, you don't necessarily have to win to play the game, then maybe you can keep diluting him all those years. Well, he's just got to make a statement. Uh, and I say, you know, I know he's going to do it in an hour or make, say something, but he, he's got to declare. Like uh, if, if, if the, cause the angels aren't winning this year with trout out. I mean, you know, I shouldn't say anything so absolutely, but I think you can say that safely. So the question is, is will he resign in the fall? And if the Angels put on the table something that even starts with a seven and he says no, then then that's the end of it. Then then you can basically say, we tried our best. We put something on the table that said a seven. He said he wants to test the waters. So that's it. And we've got to get somebody here. And if I'm looking out at the field and I don't see every – every seat filled because Otani's pitching like it's some sort of festival, which would happen at Dodger Stadium, Yankee Stadium, Fenway Park, City Field. Yep. I could go on and on and on if he does show up there. Um, name it. Uh, the number of different cities in the United States that would fill up their baseball park once every five days just because he is pitching, then I'm Artie Moreno. I'm like, then that's the end of that. I got to cut my losses, at least get yep. something and start building like the, the, like the Rays do you know, or, or the Guardians and start winning baseball games that way. That's the way I would handle it if I were him, you know? Yeah, I, Rich, I, I don't disagree with you at all, but the battle between logic and emotion is one that has been waged throughout the course of history. <laughs> and wars are more often fought because of emotion than logic. You know, our, our logical brains, we know they're right. Our emotional brains are the ones we listen to, though. At you, Jeff Passan. That's the most thought-provoking thing I've ever heard from somebody sitting in an ice machine room in a hotel in my entire life, Jeff. <laughs> it's, a, it's a high Honestly, bar, isn't it? I think that's maybe the most thought-provoking thing that's ever been said in that room. Period. Other than just like, you know, who's got the vodka? You know, like. 
You know, yeah, really mixing with this. Say, it might be the only thing you said in this room aside from why are the buckets for the ice purple? <laughs> or so damn small. What do I do with these tongs? They are. Okay. Jeff Passon here on like, the Rich why Eisen are there Show. Only, why are there only three bags? <laughs> He uses liners for these dirty ice buckets. That's it. Look Shameful. To, that's right. Um, how, how, here's here's a new here's a new uh, turn for you. Uh, Eric Adams, not the only mayor in New York City now, huh? How about uh, Sean Casey being named the new yeah. hitting coach for the Yankees? What the hell's going on uh, with that team right now, Jeff? What's happening? They don't have Aaron Judge, and when the Yankees don't have Aaron Judge, they're a slightly above average baseball team. And I think they have probably enough pitching to keep them in contention as long as Judge is out. But this is not a team that's better than the Baltimore Orioles. They're not better than the Tampa Bay Rays. They're not better than the Texas Rangers. They're not better than the Houston Astros. Uh, You can argue that they're not better than the Toronto Blue Jays. Like, the Yankees are a borderline playoff team right now. And Aaron Boone knows Sean Casey from their days together with Cincinnati Reds. And Sean Casey, uh, has he been on the show before? He's delightful. I mean, he's going to he's going to definitely yeah. make that that clubhouse a lot he, lively, a lot he more. Is. He's going to be he's infectious. And I, 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 I would he just is. love the, that to be part of their hitting approach as well. You know, that would be great. Yeah. I was going to say their their hitting approach so far has been infected as opposed to infectious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the point. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know. You know, sometimes you just got to change coaches for the sake of change. Like if something's not working, then a coach is the right scapegoat. And Dylan Lawson in this case was the scapegoat. And I, you know, I think Sean Casey is a, a pretty brilliant hitting mind actually. Um, the guy hit 300 regularly throughout his career and uh, understands the mechanics of hitting extremely well. But this job, to me, is much more of a psychology play than it is a mechanical one. And, and Sean Casey is going to be there to try and build up guys who uh, have been beaten down by the excellent major league pitching that's out there right now and who just haven't been able to get going because the Yankees offense – in the month of June, I believe was the worst in baseball in terms of runs scored. And and seeing that from any New York Yankees team, it's, it boggles the mind because they are the Yankees and because they do have a $275 million payroll and because they do have all these names, whether it's Anthony Rizzo, John Carlos Stanton, Glaver Torres, DJ LeMayhew, Josh Donaldson, you know, guys who have been extremely productive in the past. Well, uh, there's not a whole lot of productivity coming out of them right now, but I, I don't deny the fact that it might still be there, and they just need to find someone who can help extract it. So then, um, yeah, I know um, that that's the problem is their their lineup might be constructed better for a 2017 fantasy team. You know what I mean? Like that's that's yeah. potentially the issue. Um, so which team do you think might be that 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 second half? Uh, screw that one. I want to talk Ellie De La Cruz in my time remaining with you. I love this guy. Good. I'm I think glad. I, I think he is that. I think he is a revelation. I think he should be in Seattle. I think the baseball should create like a commissioner's choice, one in each league, somebody that's just been dynamite in the month before that might not have that might have come up too late, might not have caught fire till the end and everybody's talking about and that player should be in the all star game. Screw it. I mean if well, this is a game where let me let me Rich, let me let me what, let me ask you this. Did you know that they did invite him to the home run derby? I did hear that, but he he said no, correct? He did say no. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, and, it, but and he said, I, 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 I put that, listen, I understand why he said no. I wish he would have said yes, because you're right. Like, baseball, baseball is better for having him here and for showcasing him. But the but the but the home run derby, Jeff, and this is no offense to because I used to be part of that broadcast that I will watch tonight because I'm a fan. Okay. But that that that's just a sideshow. You know, like the game is what I used to watch all the time to see these guys play baseball against one another. And in this yeah. this is the first time where we're not having a stupid ass shift. And maybe it'll be more than just a strikeout <laughs> festival. I'm serious. And that this is that guy should be in the game. That guy should be in the game 
on Tuesday night. Not not some sort of, you know, here comes the money ball. Oh, here's a timeout. You know, like that's that's not baseball. I'm excited that stars of the game are in it. But I, I want to see the kid, you know, I want to see the kid play, you know, in the game. Like, let's go Tuesday night. we got to focus on Tuesday night as much as we are Monday night. Am I wrong? I get it. I'm focused more on Monday night because I just want to see him hit 500 foot home runs. I guess. And I think the game, the game itself, it's, it's like the NBA All Star game right now. I mean, there's there's competitiveness to it, but it's almost like a it's almost like a high school showcase event more than it is an actual baseball game. Mm. You know, it's not like it's not like when we were growing up. Guys don't care who wins or loses. There's there's no great incentive to play well other than you want to be better than the best and you want to prove that. And there's something cool about that, but it seems like on a nightly basis already, Ellie De La Cruz is proving that he is better than the best across the league. And just the, it, you know what it is about him, man? It's that he does everything yeah. that you want to see. He hits for power. He throws the ball harder than anybody across the diamond and on the base pass, he's an absolute terror. And it's it's just fun. And and he's doing it with a joie de vivre That's that I really appreciate. That like you can tell he's having fun out there. Yes. And it's players like him and Julio Rodriguez and Ronald Acuna and Fernando Tatis. There's there's just a younger generation yes. that tends to be mostly of Latin American baseball players who have been training to do this very thing that they're doing from an extremely early age. And there are a lot of problems, Rich, uh, with baseball in Latin America. There's a lot of corruption down there. But I'll say one thing. The Dominican Republic and Venezuela right now are better at turning out stars than the United States, which is a wild conceit. That is a crazy thing to say. But if you just go and look at all the most dynamic players – in the world right now, like not a lot of them are from the U.S. Corbin Carroll's up there, um, but Corbin Carroll like grew up in Seattle. He was not part of the youth baseball development machine that's taking place right now. So it, it, it's one of those macro thirty thousand foot things that baseball should be taking a look at, especially the people in the United States mm-hmm. who run youth development and say, where are we going wrong and where can we go right? But I, I love watching him, man. The joie de vivre part, as you mentioned, that's the key. Just when he crossed home plate. By the way, who thinks of that, right? When, as soon as I get to third, I'm uh, going home. Uh, you know, I'm about to steal home. Yeah. You know, I'm, uh, screw hey, it. You, like, let's see, go. Uh, did you see I loved story, it. Did you see the story I wrote on Ellie by chance? Go for it. Um, did you know he has a twin brother? Get out of here. Okay. He's a twin brother who is five foot eight. Oh, my God. <laughs> So he's got a, like a, an Altuve in the family? Is that what you're saying? Is he going to be that good? It's like Schwarzenegger <laughs> and DeVito. They're, they're like twins. Real life. <laughs> it's like the movie. I was going to say, it's, it's, it's a total. I, I asked them. I was on the phone with both of them, and I asked that question. Hey, have you guys seen twins? And they were like, what's twins? And I'm like, Jesus, I am old. <laughs> I am so old right now. You're covering baseball uh, from an yeah, ice machine they, room, Jeff. They, I mean, that's old. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Sure. Pedro, Pedro De La Cruz running uh, Pedro's Boutique Car Wash uh, down in the Dominican Republic while his brother does things that uh, make rich eyes and swoon. I love it. It's awesome. I can't. I, I will look forward to reading that. ESPN.com, MLB Insider. Jeff Passan, uh, great job, Jeff. Really appreciate you, you know, dodging the ice. Is there is there a snack machine in there, too? Or it's just ice? No, but here, we're going we're gonna to do some sound effects. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Okay, that sounds yeah, cubed. That doesn't sound it crushed is. to me. That sounds cubed. cubed. Yep. That's oh oh yeah. It's the it's the rectangular cubes oh, that fancy. have like the little striations oh, at the bottom. Oh, is it I, it's, like indention? It might, it might like be in, my favorite. Yeah, it might be my favorite kind of ice actually. Man, that's impressive. Very nice. They they got nice hotels there in Seattle. <laughs> wow. Uh, to salute, man. They didn't put me up there when I covered this is the All Star Game in Seattle in two thousand. Or is that 2001, yeah, I think? They didn't, put me up. they didn't put me up here either. This is where the ballplayers are staying. Okay. <laughs> Good to know that, that the ice machine isn't the only thing frozen in time. Thank you very much, Jeff. Really appreciate the time. <laughs> Great chatting with you, man. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 